How's everyone doing today? Bringing you this short video. It's going to be a short review on the brand new revised AR7 Viper magazine. Well, it's not brand spanking new. Uh, it's new to me. Uh, but uh, Fletcher Archery revised this about, I think it was like seven or eight months ago, if I'm not mistaken. So it's, it's pretty new. Um, but the AR7 magazine has been out for a long time. I bought the first version about two years ago, and it was a great magazine. The only issue I had with that one was the front uh, fork here. One of the legs snapped off, and then uh, the bolt holder, that little nub right there, snapped off on the, on, on that same magazine the gentleman did replace both parts at no additional cost so that was great uh, he has great customer service I have no complaints of him or his company now on this magazine uh, this magazine has been completely completely revised you have a bigger a bigger door um, your front fork is very stout uh, adjustments there's not a lot of adjustment on this. If you can see right here. Where is it? Right there. Sorry about that. Right here. That is about the only adjustment you have. Because I don't know if you can see that. No, you can't see it. And I'm not going to pull this apart. Maybe next time I'll make a video on, on just this. But this has a dovetail. So this front doesn't move back and forth like the first version did. Um, but today, uh, you know, all these crossbows are basically the same size. So I'm, I'm going to assume this the adjustment from right here is, is enough um, for today's, you know, crossbows. Uh, but it's a it's a very good, uh, very good magazine. I like um, I do have some uh speed loaders now i do have speed loaders for these now uh, i do apologize i have to pause the video real quick to go and grab one these are the speed loaders these are the first edition because i bought these uh with the first iteration of this magazine and as you can see it has a adjustment nut right there um, I do have these loaded with the hunting bolts uh, just because I'm gonna show you these right here which I have sorry about the uh, lighting here I'm in the shade because it's very very hot but these are the Saxon bolts from Amazon as you can see and I have them loaded on my speed loaders for the steamboat right here and they work great on the steamboat um, but on these on these uh, crossbows and this magazine the tip is too like the bolt is too short so what happens is I'm gonna show you when you load it, you see how it all completely drops into the into the the valley of the of the crossbow, and the tip is right on the string. Let's see if you can see that. Uh, yeah, I can't see that. Let's see. Yeah, it sits right on the string. You see it right there. And when you go to cock it, it won't cock. It'll be, it'll get stuck. Whoops, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, so these, I do not recommend for this Viper magazine. Because they get stuck. Now. I like this magazine a lot better than the 
steam ball. I love the steam ball. Don't get me wrong. I love it. But there's one thing that I like about the the Viper magazine compared to the Steamboat Stinger magazine. And it's these right here. So with this, you have more of a stripper clip where you have to put it in the magazine face first, you know, head first, drop it in, and then pull like a stripper clip, All right? I like this one better because you just put it there, bam, and they all load very, very quickly, All right? No issues. So I, I like that better. If Steamboat had that, that would be that would have been awesome. Because then they would both be my my complete favorites. Um, and like I said, don't get me wrong, the Steamboat Stinger is one of my favorite crossbows. Very well built. It's just this right here. If they come up with a version like the uh like the cobra adder where you can just put it on and then push it pull back and they all drop that'd be great but i'm going to show you guys how to how i um sight in this this uh laser because this one i've i've sighted i've sighted this one in and it's working perfectly so I'm going to sight this one in right now, and I'm going to show you how I do it. So I have my caliber. This is for handguns. Uh, it's to sight in uh, reflex sights, and I just have a a bolt that I took the, the field tip off of, and I put this inside. I just have tape here because I use this for other stuff. So this is just a temporary, you know, something temporary. So what I do is, all right, I cock the bow. Sorry, I'm trying to do this behind the camera. I cock the bow, all right. I muzzle load the cider in there. And then... I feed a couple, not too many, a couple of uh, field tips, you know, field uh, target bolts, right? And that's just to hold pressure on this. And then I turn on my my sight, my uh, caliber. And it's going to be kind of difficult because can't see squat due to the sun okay and then I turn this on all right I have them both on and if, as you can see on the floor there both dots are way off all right so what I do all right, I grab there's my allen key Grab my little Allen key. Sorry about that. I think the batteries are dying on this one. I'm going to pause the video real quick. I apologize, guys. So, uh, I had to swap the batteries on this. And uh, I already sighted it in, more or less. It's too freaking bright out here. But I can't even see the red dot. Adjust this a little more. 
There's my red dot. Yeah, so anyway, what you want to do is you line up your dot from here to the dot that's right here on the target. I'm about 30 feet away, and I'm trying to do it. It's just it's so bright. But um, while I do this, um, like I said, this magazine is, is a very good magazine. I did install a little light here. Boom. And then these uh, these lasers came from the first magazine. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, this magazine does come with two Picatinny rails plus the one that's on the lid if you want to put a scope on it. Um, but all in all, it's a it's a pretty decent uh, magazine. I have no complaints on it yet. I am still testing them. Um, I will say this, that uh, <coughs> if you're using this for home defense, um, I would advise you not to keep the magazine loaded and just get yourself some speed loaders. And if you ever need it, you just speed load it instead of having it, uh, having it loaded because of the tension. You could lose spring tension. You could possibly even snap this or bend it from being loaded all the time. So I will say just to, uh, you know, get yourself some speed loaders, basically. Um, and I, I do want to touch on this topic a little bit. So the reason why all of my crossbows are the recurve style and not the compound style is because in a situation where you need to um, do some work on your string, you don't need a press. You can just unstring it and put the string on it, you know, stretch out the string with some type of uh, contraption. I do have a makeshift contraption in my inside because I do reserve all of my own strings. If the string is good, I'll reserve it. Um, if it's not, I'll just replace the full string. Um, so that's why I like the recurve styles a lot. And that's why I have so many recurve style um, crossbows. And even my bow, <coughs> I have two bows, 140, 135. Um, and they're both recurves. I shoot bare bow, meaning no sights, uh, or instinctive shooting, if that's what you want to call it. But that's how, that's how I shoot. And I'm trying to find this add-on key so I can continue to, where the hell did it go? Oh man, I think I lost my, oh, here we go. Okay, my Allen key. And I'm still trying to sight this in a little. Oh, where is it? Come on. Anyway, I'll pause the video and get back to you. Okay, so I have them both sighted in properly. Uh, I'm going to be shooting this one. Uh, another thing that I wanted to mention before I start shooting is you see these little red ones, these 6.3 inch. Um, they work on these. Um, they're just a little too short for my liking. So for this magazine, I would say go with the 6.5. That they are just a little taller than uh, than these red ones. So I would say go with the 6.5s, uh, just for, you know, so you don't cut your string. Um, yeah, so I, I would just say go with those. But here we go. The testing of this, if I can ever find my red dot. Okay, so, where are you, brother? Uh, 
Yeah, it's a little hard to see this in the daytime, but I'm aiming right for the center circle here. There we go. This crossbow is pretty powerful. I got it. This is an 80 pound crossbow. <clears throat> so in the daytime, if you have the red dot, it's very, very hard to see. Unless you're in a shaded area, it's really hard to see. That's why I'm a big fan of optics instead of lasers. Because the optics, <clears throat> you get the green dot optics, and it's a lot easier to see than this. I have one more shot, two more shots. And it's pretty easy to to shoot without the uh, the red dot. I found that if you just line up, you know, make it nice and flat, you're pretty much going to hit whatever you're aiming at. Is it going to be, you know... Accurate? Uh, probably not, but you'll hit it. I've tried it. And here's our little grouping here. It's about the size of a palm. Except for this one. This one's a little off. This one right here. But the rest of these are about the palm. And again, you know, I'm, I'm shooting this in the daytime where the red dot kind of sucks to see. So, trying my best to uh, to get this on. Okay, but there you go. At 30 feet, they're both pretty accurate. Uh, they're both uh, with the red dot sight, with the red dot laser. Uh, they do the job, you know. Um, but if you want to get these, uh, you can go on the site on ebay uh fletchette archery has a ebay store that you can that you can purchase these at you can purchase the speed loaders again this is the first gen he does have he did revise these as well uh, i got a bunch of these so i'm not buying anymore at the moment i have like 10 of them so i'm not buying anymore at the moment um but yeah you can purchase these off of his ebay store i'm gonna Put the link of his eBay store in the description below. All right. Have you guys a great day and enjoy your Memorial Weekend.